This short training will introduce you to seven of the 16 bands on ABI, the ones that you will likely use most frequently in the forecast decision-making process. I'm Scott Lindstrom from SIMS. Here's a chart that shows the visible and near-visible or near-infrared channels that are present on the ABI. The two channels you'll be seeing in this training are the red visible at 0.64 micrometers and the 1.6 micrometer snow ice channel that is so important if you want to view glaciation. Here are the infrared bands on the ABI that we'll be discussing. Here's another way to view the six visible and near infrared bands. The black line is transmittance in the atmosphere. Again, we're focusing in this training on bands 2 and 5. The 0.64 micrometer, or red visible band, is the primary band used to identify features in the visible, and it's a legacy channel that extends GOES observations at visible wavelengths. It has the finest spatial resolution of all ABI bands, half kilometer at the subsatellite point. Besides being used as a standalone band for major critical decision making, such as during hurricanes and fog detection, it is very useful in mesoscale sectors with one minute imagery for rapidly changing phenomena, especially convection and fires. The red band in combination with a green band simulated from the veggie band at 0.86 micrometers and the blue band at 0.47 micrometers provides approximate natural true color imagery of the Earth as well. This example shows a distinct above anvil plume with a severe thunderstorm over Texas and Oklahoma. The beauty of visible imagery, especially at a one minute time step, don't be afraid to call mesos, is that you can see the evolution of the cloud top structures that are associated with strong convection. Mesoscale sectors supply the data at one minute time steps. If you want to know precisely when, for example, fog might dissipate, call a meso. Visible imagery allows for real time monitoring of the horizontal extent of smoke plumes. This is vital information for air quality, and that information can impact your high temperature forecast as well. Visible imagery is the primary source of low-level derived motion winds as well during the daytime. That's important for identifying areas of wind shear and jet maxima. AWIPS includes simulated true color imagery that is made with the red band at 0.64 as well as with the blue band and the simulated green band from the veggie band. These true color images, including for example geocolor, are useful for tracking smoke features because smoke has a very distinct color that is separate from clouds in true color imagery. This slide shows when you might use the visible imagery on the left, level 2 products that use the imagery on the right. There's also a link you can click to see a band 2 fact sheet. Here's a reminder slide of what you have learned. The snow ice band at 1.61 micrometers importantly will discriminate between clouds, snow, and ice. This is especially useful if you're monitoring glaciation of developing convection. Compare the reflectance of snow, which is shown in the cyan line, in the visible on the left at 0.64 micrometers, highly reflective, compared to the 1.61 micrometer snow ice channel on the right, not very reflective at all. Snow and ice appears gray or black in the 1.61, while it will appear very bright in the visible. So when you compare the visible, shown here, with the 1.61, and you toggle between the two, you can see where there are regions of snow, because they are bright in the visible and dark in the 1.61. The same thing with cirrus clouds are bright in the visible and fairly dark in the 1.61. Here we show some annotation. Note also the big land water contrast in the 1.61 that's kind of missing in the visible imagery. If you have 1.61 in an RGB, then you have different colors meaning different things. In this case, the cyan in the day land cloud is indicating either snow on the ground or jet stream cirrus. Similarly, if, if you have the day cloud phase distinction, snow on the ground is showing up as green. If you're monitoring convection with a day cloud phase distinction, there is a noticeable change in color as clouds glaciate. That's very handy information. Knowledge of glaciation is very important for lightning decision support. That's an important use of the 1.61 micrometer channel. Finally, 1.61 micrometers 
is important because very hot fires will emit detectable amounts of 1.61 micrometer energy. This channel is part of the fire temperature RGB. We use this to quantify how hot a fire might be. Uses for this band are on the left. Level 2 products that use the band are on the right. And you can click the link to find a fact sheet. This chart shows in blue where the 10 different infrared channels are detecting emitted radiation from the Earth. The black line shows what a satellite would sense above a U.S. standard atmosphere. We'll be talking about band 7 at 3.9 micrometers, band 13 at 10.3 micrometers, and the three water vapor channels at bands 8, 9, and 10 at 6.2 to 7.3 micrometers. Band 7 and 13 are window channels. That is to say that there is relatively little absorption by gases in the atmosphere, so in a clear sky, the emitted amount of radiation is pretty much what you're seeing emitted from the surface of the Earth. In contrast, energy that's emitted at 6.2, 6.9, and 7.3 micrometers is absorbed by water vapor. Then it's re-emitted from a higher, colder temperature. First, let's talk about 3.9 micrometers, band 7, the shortwave infrared band. This band, like all infrared channels, has 2 kilometer resolution, and it's especially useful for detecting low-level temperatures and especially fires. You can also use the brightness temperature at 3.9 micrometers in combination with the brightness temperature at 10.3 micrometers to identify regions of low clouds at night. 3.9 micrometers will also give you information about cloud top particle size because the amount of solar radiation reflected is a function of particle size. 3.9 micrometers is also used in many derived products. Fire detection is one of the most important uses of the 3.9 micrometer channel. Here's an example over Southern California, and you can see over the course of the day how the fire, the extent of the fire increases. There's also a general warming over the land um, as shown by the increase in temperature. The shortwave infrared at 3.9 micrometers has the best detection capabilities of low level thermal gradients. Here's an example showing the north wall of the Gulf Stream. Fog detection at night is also an important use of the 3.9 micrometer channel. Here's an example of the night fog brightness temperature difference in AWIPS on the left and the GO-17 nighttime microphysics RGB on the right. Regions of low clouds stand out pretty well. Solar reflectance at the top of convection during the daytime is a function of cloud particle size or size of the ice crystals. The difference field between the 3.9 and 10 point micrometer channels will have a strong positive value where ice crystals are very small. And that is used in the day convection RGB to highlight regions of intense convection where very small ice crystals are pushed up into the upper troposphere. Here's a reminder slide of some uses of band 7, the 3.9 micrometer shortwave infrared on the left, level 2 baseline products that use the channel on the right, and you can click the link for a band 7 fact sheet. Band 13 at 10.3 micrometers is called the clean window infrared band because there's very little absorption by water vapor near that wavelength, 10.3 micrometers. This is the chief infrared band that you'll probably be using. It has many uses for general monitoring of weather phenomena day or night. One of the more important uses of the clean window infrared band 13 at 10.3 micrometers is to monitor the cloud top during convective events. Call a meso so you get the most accurate view of what's going on at cloud top during strong convection. Clean window infrared imagery is also important in assessing hurricane intensity. Uses for the 10.3 micrometer imagery are on the left. Level 2 baseline products that use this imagery are on the right and you can click the link for a quick guide. The three water vapor channels, bands 8, 9, and 10 at 6.19, 6.9, and 7.3 micrometers, offer a wealth of opportunities to monitor what's going on in the atmosphere in both clear and cloudy skies. Water vapor imagery can be used to identify features and to infer flow, as shown in this example. You can also use water vapor imagery to identify regions where clear air turbulence might exist. An important note about water vapor imagery is that the three channels see different levels in the atmosphere. In this example, something that is apparent at 7.3 micrometers farther down in the atmosphere 
is not showing up at 6.2 micrometers because the signal has been absorbed. Here's another example where we see something that's very obvious at 7.3 micrometers, but not obvious at 6.9 or in the clean window channel. Weighting functions can tell you where in the atmosphere the signal that is being detected by the satellite is coming from. In this example, you'll notice that the 6.2 micrometer signal in green is coming from higher in the atmosphere than the 7.3 micrometer information in magenta. That's fairly common. Click on the link to access a video on weighting functions. This table identifies some of the uses of the channels you've just learned about. Visible on the left, clean window on the right, and the other three are in the middle. These of course are not the only uses. You can probably think of some additions to this off the top of your head. Here are some links with more information. This concludes this short training. Thanks for listening.